there's a few animation tricks that professionals use to bring their animations to life. In this video, we're going to cover how you can use them in DaVinci Resolve Fusion to make your animations look more natural. If you haven't already, check out my video on the key to keyframes before watching this video. The first animation technique is overshoot, and this is when the object you're animating goes past its resting destination and then comes back. On the first frame, we're going to bring the text all the way off the screen, and then add a keyframe on the center X and Y. Then move forward to frame 70 and bring the text back up so it is in the center of the screen just by typing 0.5 in the box. Then open the spline editor, select the text, and select both these keyframes. Press F on your keyboard to flatten them. About a third of the way through the animation, add a point on this graph and drag it up so it is past the second point. Then select all the keyframes and press S on your keyboard to smooth them out. Select the last keyframe again, press T on your keyboard, and then bring this up till it's about 60 or 70. When we play this, the text is going to shoot up and then come back down to its resting position. To change the intensity, just grab this middle point and shift it up or down or left to right if you need to change the speed. The basics of this animation are now set. As a final touch, let's add a rotation to the overshoot as well. So on the first frame, come down to the Z rotation and add a keyframe, but just leave the value at zero. Then go to frame 70 and add another keyframe at zero. Go to the same frame in the middle that we added that position animation and add a slight Z rotation. Finally, select those rotation keyframes and press F on your keyboard to flatten them. You can disable the position easing controls just by clicking those boxes right there, and then you can mess around with the curve of the rotation until you get something that looks natural. Just like with the position, you can change the intensity just by dragging this keyframe up or down. I think that looks pretty good. The second technique is an elastic animation. This is when the object moves back and forth, but over time it slows down and becomes less intense, until it ends up in a resting position. One thing we always want to do if possible is make our animations procedural. This means that if we change something like the text or the size of the text, we don't want the animation to break. It's not possible with every animation, but in this case it is possible using the size control on the layout tab. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. First, messing with keyframes in the spline editor can really take up a lot of time during editing. And don't get me wrong, they're still extremely useful, and I think every Every editor should know how to do each one of these animations. But if you reuse the same animation or effect over and over again during editing, it doesn't make sense to build it from scratch every single time. That's what I built Editor Collection for, to make those boring, repetitive tasks easy and get you a consistent result every time. For me, the tools in Editor Collection save me a couple hours on each one of my videos. Not to mention, it makes editing a lot more fun. So if you want to save some time editing, check out a full list of the 20 tools included in Editor Collection linked down below. Now, back to making that procedural elastic animation. In the text note, go to the layout tab and this size control is what we're going to be using to animate it. On frame 0, set a keyframe with a size at 0. Then go a couple of frames forward and bring the size up to 1. Then go to frame 40 and add another keyframe with a size at 1. For the rest of the animation, we're going to be using the spline editor. We want to add in a bunch of points between the second keyframe and the last keyframe. So remember this line at 1. Each one of these points you want to be on a different side of that line. So you just want to alternate back and forth. And over time these should be less intense and grow farther apart. Every time the keyframe should be separated by more time and be closer to that center line. I find it best if the elastic animation drops off fast. So this first point is going to be way above the line, and then the second one isn't going to be quite as far away. And just over time they get less and less intense until finally you reach that last keyframe. Once you complete that, select all the keyframes and press S to smooth them. And then if you need to change the intensity, you can just drag these points up or down to make it either more intense or less intense. Every time you make a change, just remember to select those keyframes and press S just to re-smooth them out. With an elastic animation, usually you need to tweak the keyframes around just a little bit until you get something that looks good, but right away we have a good looking elastic animation. And like I said, we set this up to be procedural. So if we go back to the text tab, we can change the text, we can change the font, or even just change the size, the tracking of it, and the animation is going to update so that way it works perfect no matter what the text is. The third technique is parallax, and it's really great if you have several objects in your scene. It adds depth to your graphic, makes it feel less flat. If you hold both hands in front of your face and then just move your head side to side, it's going to look like the hand closest to you is moving faster than the one behind it and the wall behind that hand. That's the effect that we want to mimic. The easiest way to set this up is using a simple expression. In my composition, I have three different elements. The first one is these background clouds, then I have this text, and then I have the foreground clouds. All the clouds are created in vector using the shape system. For the clouds, I did make it so some extend past the screen, so that way when we shift over, it just doesn't go to a blue sky. And to animate this, I just want to use one transform node after the text node. So press shift space to pull this up and then type transform and hit enter. Right before the S render nodes, I also added an S transform nodes, which you can do just with shift space. If you'll notice, the X offset starts at zero, where in the normal transform node, it starts at 0.5. So we got to keep that in mind for our expression. Inside of this first transform, we want to right click on the X offset and then do expression. Inside of here, we're going to start with an opening parentheses. Type transform1. This is going to reference this transform node that we added after the text node. 
Then we want to reference the center control. So we'll do dot center and then do dot x. So that way it only grabs the x value. Since we want this control to be equal to zero when the normal transform node is equal to 0.5, we're just going to do negative 0.5 in this expression box and then add a closing parenthesis. If we go back to this transform node and we move the center x back and forth, you can see the back clouds are now going to move with it. And that's not exactly the result that we're looking for. So back in this transform node, we're going to multiply it by 0.5. So it'll have half the motion that the transform node does. Now when we move this back and forth, you can see the text is going to move faster than the clouds behind it. If we copy this expression, let's move over to the second transform node, right click on the x offset, do expression, paste this in, but instead of multiplying by 0.5, we're going to multiply by 2. Now back in the transform node after the text, we can shift this back and forth, and all of them are going to move at different speeds. If you want to change the intensity of the parallax, you can come into both of these transform nodes and just change the value that they're multiplied by. So instead, we can maybe demultiply it by 1.2, and in this one, we multiply it by 0.8. Now it's going to have a less noticeable parallax. As a bonus, we can copy this expression, right-click on the y offset, paste it in here, and then just change the center.x to center.y. Let's do that for the second one here, so copy it, right-click on the control, expression, and then change this to center.y. Now inside of this text transform, we can move this and it's going to have parallax in both the x and the y axis. Now all we need to do is animate this one control. So let's start with the position right about there, add a keyframe, then move to the end of the composition and move this control off to the side. And now just like that, we have a really nice parallax animation. The fourth technique is continued motion, and it's when the object that you're animating never actually comes to a complete stop. It always has some sort of movement. This can either be very subtle or very obvious. Either way, it's a good way to make your animation less boring. For this one, I have some text that slides up onto the screen, and once we get to the end, it just slides off. In the middle though, it's very boring. So let's add in a transform node using shift space right after the shadow node. At the beginning, we're going to drag the y value down and add a keyframe on the control. Then go to the last frame and drag this y value all the way up. If we hit play, it's going to slide up and it's just going to keep moving ever so slightly. Once it reaches the end, it's going to slide off. To change the intensity of it, you can just click on the transform node and then just grab these controls here and drag them up or down, and that'll make it more obvious or less obvious. This effect also works great when you're animating the size or rotation. You just have to follow the same steps. Last but not least, we have the bounce animation as our fifth technique, and I have a pretty easy way to do it. Just like the elastic animation, we can make this one procedural as well. Inside of our text node, we want to set the V anchor to be at the bottom. This way, if we go to the layout tab and set the center Y to be 1, it's going to be at the top of the screen. And if we set it to 0, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen, even if we change the size of the text or the amount of text that's in here. We're going to start at frame 0 and add a keyframe with the Y control at 1. Depending on if you have a font or a shadow, you might want to bring this Y control up just a little bit higher, and then we're good to go. We're going to follow some similar steps as to the elastic animation. So if we just go a few frames forward, add a keyframe with the Y at 0. Then go to frame 50 and add another keyframe with the Y at 0. Now we're going to open the spline editor and get to work. If you drop a basketball on the ground, the first bounce is going to be the highest, and every bounce after that is going to get lower and lower until it stops bouncing. And when the ball bounces the first time, that's when it's going to have the most air time, meaning that the bounces are going to be farther apart. But as the bounce gets lower, it's going to hit the ground more and more often. So inside the spline editor, we're just going to add some keyframes with the Y at 0. And each time, we're just going to make these keyframes get a little bit closer together, um, until eventually at the end, they're starting to get really rapid. Let's start with something like that. Then what we're going to do is click on this first keyframe and grab the animation handle and hold down control when you're adjusting it. If you don't hold down control, a lot of times it's going to move both the handles at the same time. So grab the handles, hold down control, and we want to add in some bounces. We're just going to go through on each of these, making the bounce less intense every single time. Once that's done, go ahead and hit play, and you can take a look at the animation. This one looks pretty good right away, but a lot of times you do have to go through and tweak the animations, change the timings, the intensity of the bounce, until you find something that looks good. On this first one, it's good to flatten that first keyframe and make this in animation just a little bit more intense just to give it some impact when it hits the ground. And now we have a nice procedural bounce animation. So I could come in here and say subscribe. I can even change the font and the size. And just like that, the animation is going to fully update so that way the bounce animation stays the same. As a final touch to all these animations, make sure to add some motion blur by going into the settings tab in the text, checking motion blur, and bringing the quality up. This is going to make it look a lot more smooth and a lot more natural. A lot of these animations are combinable, so in some cases you can use multiple at once. Make sure to check out editor collection and editor titles down below if you want to save a ton of time when editing. And check out this video where I cover animation paths in depth and all the cool things that you can do with it.